Jesus, we lift our hands. Come on, why don't you lift your hands in this place? It might be a little bit uncomfortable for you, but this sign of surrender, oh Jesus, we sing our song to you. Sing, I'm gonna lift my hands. I'm gonna lift my hands. to worship you, Jesus. We lift you high in this place. We recognize you because you are God and you are worthy. Let's sing this together. Our Father everlasting, the all-creating one, God Almighty. Through your Holy Spirit, Conceiving Christ the Son, Jesus our Savior. I believe in God our Father. I believe in Christ the Son. I believe in the Holy Spirit. Our God is three in one. I believe in the resurrection that we will rise again. For I believe in the name of Jesus. Lord, we declare, we believe in your name. Our judge and our defender, sing these words of conviction. Our judge and our defender suffered and crucified. Forgiveness is Thank you, God. Descended into darkness, you rose in glorious light, forever seated high. Yeah. I believe in God our Father, I believe in Christ the Son, I believe in the Holy Spirit.
Wow. Man, you guys sound so great singing tonight. Isn't it great to sing the name of Jesus together? Yeah. Yeah. You know, we're just so glad you're here. So welcome to Night of Worship. We're so thrilled that we're doing these again and that you're making this a priority in your life. Yeah. <laughs> You know, God just does something really special in this place when we gather for nights like this. And uh, tonight, uh, we're so thrilled that our worship team, I gotta tell you, these people that stand behind me, they are some of the best people I know who are just awesome worshipers. Yeah, yeah. Worshipers on stage and off stage. And tonight, they're gonna lead us in songs of joy and of victory and of freedom. We're also gonna hear from Buddy Owens and Mike Brook. Yep. They're gonna lead us in significant times of prayer and communion, and they're really gonna help direct our focus on Jesus, the one who brings us hope when we feel like we are most lost, and the one who gives us joy greater than we can imagine. Yeah, so we're gonna continue singing. We're gonna worship in many ways tonight, but one of the main ways we're gonna do that is through singing. And we're gonna sing words that, to be honest, are very easy to sing and we're in certain seasons of life and some other words that are a little challenging to sing depending on where we're at. But tonight, we just wanna create space for you to express your heart, your mind, your gratitude to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, in this place together. And maybe as a result of that, we will see chains broken in this place tonight. Amen? Mm. Yeah? We will see ourselves as a community and individually take steps closer to the people that God wants us to be. So let's sing, are you guys ready? <laughs> All right, we're gonna sing, we're gonna sing to the name that sets us free, we're gonna sing to the name that offers grace, we're gonna sing to the name that heals and restores and that saves. We're gonna make some noise in here tonight, are you guys ready? All right, All right let's, let's do it. Sing. Worship today. If Jesus is alive in you, let me hear you give him a shout today. Let's sing it out. I was lost with a broken heart. Yeah. You picked me up, now I'm set apart. From the ash I am born again. Forever safe in the Savior's hand. You are more than my words can say. I'll follow you, Lord, for all my days. My eyes follow in your ways Forever free in an ending grace You are, you are, you are, you are My freedom We lift you higher, lift you higher Your love, your love, your love Never Your love has set us free. 
lift our voice and sing a new song to the Lord.
Hi, everybody. You can be seated. Isn't it great to be together? And you know the Lord is here. The Lord is here. The Lord is always present when his people gather to worship him. He promises that in the word. I mean, Jesus even said, when, if just two or three of you will get together, I'll come and be with you. And as I look out here on this crowd of people, there's a whole lot of two and threes. So he's here in our midst, and when the Lord is present, he always comes bearing gifts. He always does. He's so gracious. He comes with gifts. He come, the Bible says there's healing in his wings. And I'm, I'm believing, we were praying before we started tonight, and I'm, I'm really believing the Lord to move in this place among us. I don't want to leave this place the same way I came in. I don't, I don't want any of you to leave the same way you came in. What do you need from the Lord tonight? What do you need from him? What do you want him to do for you? What gift are you hoping for? Don't lose that hope. We're going to talk about that. Because if the Lord is present when we gather to worship him, then the question to ask is, wouldn't it be great to always have a, 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 an awareness of God's presence in your life? Every day of your life, not just every now and then, not just when you gather at church, but to have a continual expectation, not expectation, confidence. It's more than expectation. A continual confidence of the presence of the Lord in your life where you can see, feel, sense, understand something of the peace that passes understanding, that it's always with you that you see more and more of the fruit of the Spirit growing in your life all of the time, that people around you have a sense of something different about your life. They know that there's something going on that maybe they don't have. And you think, man, how could that happen in my life? Well, that's what I want to talk about. I want to talk about the relationship of worship and the presence of God, of worship and the glory of God in your life. I want to start by looking at a verse from Psalm 89, 15, it's, it's here on the screen. Sorry I don't have outlines for you, I'm just too lazy. <clears throat> so you just have to listen and look, all right? But look at what the Bible says in Psalm 89, 15. It says, blessed are those who have learned to acclaim you, who walk in the light of your presence, O Lord. Wouldn't you love to walk in the light of his presence? In the scripture, to walk means to live. It's not just to put one foot in front of the other. They walk, they live in the light of your presence, O Lord. They rejoice in your name all day long. They exult, that means to leap up in joy. They exult, they leap for joy in your righteousness. So what does all of that mean? It means that those who learn to be worshipers experience the presence of God in their daily life. That's what it means. If you want to experience the presence, the glory of God in your life, well, then you need to learn to express the glory of God and to be a worshiper. And so there's a, a biblical process, a principle that I want to talk about, that when you glorify God with your life, you invite the glory of God upon your life. Let me say that again, and I'm going to show you how this is true in Scripture. When you glorify God with your life, you invite the glory of God upon your life. Praise provides an entry point to the presence of God in whatever situation that you are in. That's why the Bible says that we enter his gates with thanksgiving. We enter his presence with praise. When you give God glory, you experience his glory. So worship, as you know, is more than just words. It's more than just songs. It's more than just religious exercises or memorized prayer. Worship is certainly not something you just sit back and observe. It's something that you are actively engaged with, actively involved with. And it's something that involves all of your life. That's why Paul tells us to offer all of life as an act of worship before God. So that your personal life and your business life and your home life your private life, your public life, that all of life is lived for the glory of God. The decisions that you make, the way you do everything you do is run through a filter, the filter of a question. 
What can I do that will bring glory to God? That even my prayers are run through a filter as Jesus taught us to pray. Lord, your kingdom come and your will be done. Now, give us this day our daily bread. But he even begins prayer by saying, no matter what happens, I want the glory of God to happen. That all of life is lived for the glory of God because there is a transaction that takes place that we're going to see here in a moment. That when you declare his glory in your words, when you declare the glory of God in your life, that he visits his glory upon your life. So let's talk for a moment about the glory of God because the glory of God is one of those glory, I should say, is one of those unfortunate words. It's an unfortunate word because the English language is very limited when we talk about glory. And so there's a difference between talking about giving glory to God and the glory of God. Those are two very different things. So I want to talk about the difference of those two things, and then we'll see how the two of them actually go together. Is that all right? Okie doke. All right. So <clears throat> when we talk about <clears throat> giving glory to God in the Bible, there's a word for that, and the word is a, is a Hebrew word. It's the word halal. Halal. Everybody say halal. 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 It's where we get the word hallelujah. It means to praise, to give adoration, to it actually literally means to boast or to brag about someone. So when you are praising God with your words, you're bragging about him. You're giving him his attaboys. You're telling him he's awesome. You're telling other people that he's awesome. That's what halal is. That's what it means to give glory to God. It's halal. It's to praise, to admire, to adore, to worship God. But the glory of God is an entirely different word. When, when we think of the glory of God, when you read it in Scripture, where it says the glory of the Lord filled the temple, or the glory of the Lord shone round about them, we generally tend to think of the glory of God as something having to do with light, like a blinding light, like the light that, that, uh, that blinded uh, Paul when he was on the road to Damascus. We think of something that is so, so bright and shimmering that we can hardly even look at it. That's how we normally tend to think about the glory of God. <clears throat> but in the Bible, the glory of God has much more to do with substance than with light. The word for the glory of God in the Old Testament is the word kabod. Kabod. Everybody say kabod. Okay, now say halal. halal. Say kabod. kabod. Two different words, right? The word kabod has less to do with light than it has to do with substance, with presence, with essence, with power, with force. That's what the glory of God is. It's the, the forceful, magnificent presence of his being. That's the glory of God. To say it's only light would be sort of like talking about the sun as if the sun were nothing more than light. The light of the sun makes us aware of the sun, the light of the sun makes us aware of its presence, but the sun is much more than just light. In the same way, the glory of God, the, the light of the glory of God may make us aware of his presence, but his presence is much, much more. His glory is much, much more than just light. There is a substance to the presence, to the, to the glory of God. And most often in scripture, when God revealed his glory to his people, he did it in the place of worship. Now, this is where application starts to come in. He did it in the place of worship. At least 16 times in the Old Testament, we read, the glory of the Lord filled the temple. The glory of the Lord filled the temple. The glory of the Lord filled the temple. It was when the people had gathered for worship. The glory of the Lord filled the temple. And there is a connection that I don't want you to miss here. Because there's, there's a truth, a lesson, that could be one of the most important things that we will ever learn in life, the connection between the glory of God and giving glory to God. And here's the application. It's that worship and God's glory go together. That when we worship God and give him glory, halal, we invite the kabod, the glory of God, to move in among us. 
It's the pattern that we see throughout Scripture. Remember, you've heard me say so many times, the Bible doesn't just tell us what things were done. It tells us how things are done. So there's an eternal principle, an eternal truth, that when, you, when God is glorified by his people, he makes his glory known among his people. When we worship God and give him glory, he makes his glory known to us. And there are implications for your personal life in all of this. Because God made his glory known in the Old Testament in the temple. Now, what was the temple? The temple was the place of worship. What is the temple today? It's you, right? It's you. You are the temple of the Holy Spirit. Look at what the Bible says. Let me show you a few verses about this. Acts 17, 24 says this. God doesn't live in temples built by hands. So God does not live in buildings. Look at the next verse, 1 Corinthians 3.16. He says, don't you know that you yourselves are God's temple and that God's spirit lives in you? And 1 Corinthians chapter 6, he says again, don't you know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have from God and you are not your own? You're not your own. He says, for you were bought at a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. Your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. The temple is the place of worship. And it is in the place of worship that God dwells. It is in the place of worship where God, most often in the Old Testament, in the scriptures, makes his presence, his glory known. Under the old covenant, when the people gave glory to God in the temple, God filled the temple with his glory. Under the new covenant, when you fill this temple, the temple of your flesh, when you fill this temple with worship, you invite, you make a way, you open the door and pave the way for the glory of God to invade your life with his presence and his power. And when the Lord is present, he comes with healing. He comes with grace. He comes with order, with wisdom, with provision. It's when you worship the Lord, when you give him glory, there is a distinct show of his presence and power that is available in your life. When we worship our glorious God, he makes his glory known among us. And that is not only true in corporate worship, it is true in your personal life. That when you glorify God in your life, how you live, how you speak, how you make your choices, the filter I talked about a moment ago, that everything you do is, everything you see, every choice you make is run through a filter. Will this bring glory to God? That when you glorify God with your life, you invite the glory of God upon your life. When you, invite, when you glorify God in your home, you invite the glory of God upon your home. When you glorify God in your business, you invite the glory of God upon your business. When you glorify God in your relationships, by living out and experiencing relationships for his glory, then you invite the glory of God into those relationships. It's a transaction. And the Bible shows us over and over and over that those who learn to acclaim you, as we read in Psalm 89 a moment ago, those who learn to be worshipers, they're the ones who walk, who live, who move in the light of God's presence, experiencing all of life in the glory of God. Is that something you want to experience in your life? where it's not just every now and then, it's not just seasonal, but it's a continual experience of the presence of God. I want that. You do want that, <laughs> absolutely. And so do I. It's about time somebody said something in this room. <laughs> I want it in my life. So we're gonna worship the Lord again. 
We're gonna sing a song that I asked the worship team to teach to us. It says, your praise will ever be on my lips. And even though praise is more than just the words we say, the words we say are really important. In your relationship with your spouse or someone you love, your love for them, of course it's a whole lot more than just the words you say, but the words you say are really important. And so the praise of God should always be on our lips. Because if it's on our lips, that means it's going to be in our minds and it's going to be in our hearts too. So I'm just going to stop the message right here. I'll finish it up in a moment. But I want us to sing this song together. Can you do that with me? Let's stand. Tamri, would you come and teach us a song?
As you glorify God, there is a promise of God's glory resting on your life. Look at this next passage from Isaiah chapter 60. It says, arise and shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, and deep darkness shall cover the people, but the Lord will arise over you, and his glory will be seen upon you. When the glory of the Lord is in a place, whether it's a church, a business, a home, a life, something forceful, something weighty, something glorious is present, and other people notice it. You are not only aglow with his light, but you are empowered by his might. And it becomes obvious, that passage says, the glory of the Lord will be seen upon you. Everybody else is going to take notice. I have to ask you a question. Is what I'm saying to you too good to be true? As you think about your own life, as you think about the challenges that you're facing, is this truth too good to be true? Are you thinking, well, that's a nice idea and it probably would work for some other folks, but maybe not for me. With what I've been through, with what I've done, with what I'm going through right now, is it a hope that's too good to hope for? Let me ask you something. What is the darkest possibility that you're facing right now? What's the biggest challenge that's in front of you? What is your greatest fear? Is anything too hard for God? Or has he finally met his match in your problem? <laughs> Is God wringing his hands and saying, I don't know, I give up. <laughs> if God can save you, if he can save you from an eternity in hell, then what is to keep him from saving you from the hell that you're in right now? If God can give you a new life, then what is to keep him from giving you a new home, a new life, a new world, a new possibility, a new vision? What is to keep him from doing that? When you declare the glory of God with your words, with your actions, with the way you live, you invite the presence and power, the glory of God into your life and into the situation. Whatever you face, Whatever challenge you are up against, whatever you are afraid of, worship the Lord. Praise his name. Brag about his greatness to everybody you know. Declare the glory of God and then watch. As his word has shown us so plainly, watch as the glory of God begins to move into your life with power, with peace, with order with conviction, with joy, with healing, with release. When we worship the glory of God, we invite the glory of God upon our lives. That's why worship is so important for you. That's why God wants us to be worshiping people. It's not because he needs his attaboys. It's because he understands this truth. That when you worship God, you are surrendering yourself to his sovereignty and his power in your life. And God wants nothing more than his sovereignty and power to move through you and into you and to the world around you. And that's why he wants us to be worshiping people. And when the Lord is present, everybody else is going to sit up and take notice. They will see a difference in your life. When I was a kid, my parents bought a house from some people who were not worshipers of Jesus. They were worshipers of a whole lot of other things that you don't want to be worshiping. My parents loved the Lord. Our whole family did. A lot of our friends did. And so we turned our house into a place of worship. About a month later, the daughter, an adult daughter, 
of the people who had owned the home. The girl had grown up in that home. She came to visit us. And she walked in the door, made a left turn to walk into the kitchen, and stopped dead in her tracks. And she said, it's gone. My mom said, what's gone? She said, the heaviness, the darkness. What did you do? It's gone. When you turn your life into a place of worship, this temple of flesh, you fill it with the glory of God. Other people are going to sit up and take notice. That doesn't mean that everything is hunky-dory. What it does mean is it gives a little hunky to your dory. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it puts joy in your heart. I got to write that down. I never thought of that before. Put some hunky in your dory. <clears throat> but people notice the difference and say, man, with what you are going through, how can you have so much peace? How can you have so much joy? How can you have so much confidence with what you're going through? It's because I worship the Lord. And it's because I'm counting on him to be faithful to his word and to show his glory in my life and through my life. When the Lord is present, he's present in power. So I want to ask you, we're going to come now to a time of prayer and worship, and I want to ask you, where do you want to see the glory of God show up in your life? I asked you a couple times about the challenge, about the darkness that you're facing, about whatever it is that you're afraid of, where you need the glory of God to show up in your life. I want us to spend a few minutes in prayer together, in prayer of worship. I want to invite you to just close your eyes and bow your heads. I'm gonna lead you through a time of prayer. I know when I ask that question, it doesn't take you long to come up with an answer. <clears throat> and as I've done so many times, I wanna invite you to just hold your hands open in front of you because I want you to place whatever that is, I just wanna want you to place it in your hands and bring it to the Lord in prayer. And take a moment and tell him what's going on. Just in your own private prayer. Tell him what's on your mind. Just unburden yourself to him. And when you're ready, just turn your palms down like you're letting go and give it to him. Just let go. And you can pray this way in your heart. Just say, Lord, I, I glorify you. I praise you. I halal you as my king. Let your kingdom come. I praise you as my master. Let your will be done. I praise you as my provider. Lord, you know I need daily bread today. Lord, I praise you as my savior. Would you forgive me of my sins? Lord, I praise you as my healer. Would you heal my broken body? Lord, I praise you as my deliverer. Would you set me free from my fear? And I worship you, Lord. I give you the praise of my life as my God, as my father, as my friend as my counselor, the captain of my salvation, the savior of my soul. I worship you, Lord, and I pray that all of my life will be lived for your glory. Whatever comes of my life, that no one could ever say that the glory of God was not there. Lord, let all of life, all of me, be an expression of praise to you. Help me to learn to be a worshiper so that I too can walk in the light of your presence. And as we continue in this moment of prayer, I want to ask if you would like us to pray for you, 
I'm not going to ask you to say anything at all. But if there's something going on and you just you want to be prayed for by the church, I'm just inviting you to stand right where you are. Don't be afraid. This is a family. You're not going to have to tell us what it is. Just stand. If you want the church to pray for you, because I'm going to lead us all in prayer in a moment for all of you. Whatever's going on. So much brokenness, but so many possibilities for God's miraculous healing. I want to ask the rest of you, you know if somebody stood up next to you, just stand next to them, put your hand on their shoulder, take them by the hand, and I want to lead us in prayer. It's good for the body of Christ to touch the body of Christ. Go ahead and let me pray. Father, you've shown us in your word that when we glorify you, that you reveal your glory to us. And we hold you to your word tonight. Your word says that you come with healing in your wings. And so, Lord, we pray for healing here tonight. That you will heal broken bodies, sick bodies. That you will heal broken hearts, those who mourn and grieve. Lord, bring healing and comfort. We pray that you will heal broken minds, deliver people from confusion, from doubt, from fear, from mental illnesses. Come as a healer tonight. Lord, come as a provider where there is great need. Would you move into these situations and bring miracles? where there are broken relationships, would you come as a reconciler and heal broken homes, broken marriages, broken love? And be a healer, Lord. You see the needs of your people. And we look to you. And we trust you. And we thank you. And we worship you as our God and our King. Lord, for every need that is in this place, you are the answer. And so we pray that you will come and answer and move among us and touch people's lives here in this place. We ask this in Jesus' name and for the glory of God. Amen. <clears throat> you can be seated. God wants to shine his glory on your life, on your home, and every day he wants to do it. And the way he does that is if you will just choose to glorify him and to offer him your worship, to thank him even before you have the answer to your prayer. That's what worship really is. Anybody can praise God when they got money in their pockets. But worship is when you praise God when you don't have two dimes to rub together. Anybody can praise God when they're healthy and happy, but worship is when you choose to praise God even though your body is broken and you're scared to death. It's a choice that we make to glorify God and to invite his glory into our lives. And when he does, then we can watch and see how he begins to transform us day by day, moment by moment, into the image of Christ. We begin to see more of the fruit of the Spirit in our lives. You say, where's this fruit of the Spirit? I thought it was all supposed to be so great. Well, when you worship the Lord, you make yourself available to the fruit of the Spirit. You begin to see more love, more joy, more peace and patience. Anybody here need patience? Anybody here got kids? <laughs> worship the Lord. You begin to see more kindness and gentleness in your life. You see more faithfulness. You'll see more self-control when you choose to be a worshiper and invite his glory into your life. Look at this last passage from 2 Corinthians chapter 3. It says, Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And we who with unveiled faces all reflect the Lord's glory, just like the sunlight reflecting the glory of the sun, we who with unveiled faces reflect the Lord's glory 
We are being transformed into his likeness with ever-increasing glory, which comes from the Lord, who is the Spirit. In other words, the more you glorify Jesus, the more you become like Jesus. Does anybody want to be like Jesus? You do it by glorifying him. And when people look at you, they'll say, the Lord is there. I know what you've been up to. You've been worshiping again, haven't you? I can see him. He's right there. And they'll see it in your life. We have a couple opportunities tonight. We're going to continue to sing, but a couple opportunities to express worship to God. We're going to come to the table, to the communion table, and Pastor Mike Brooks, our college pastor, is going to come out in just a moment, and he's going to lead us in a time of communion. But another opportunity that I love to give you at the night of worship is the opportunity to be baptized. It's a statement that you are a worshiper of God. It is a statement that you are a follower of Jesus Christ. Jesus commanded us to be baptized. It is a first step in following the Lord and in saying that my life is going to be lived for his glory. So if you've not been baptized, I would love to baptize you right now, tonight. Don't even think you got an excuse. We've got shirts and shorts and towels and hot water and the whole deal right outside there. So in a few minutes, when we begin to sing again, when we start coming to the communion tables, just come outside if you want to be baptized, and I will baptize you tonight. But I also want to encourage all of us. When you come for communion, and we're worshiping as the worship team is leading us, sing. Let them hear your voice. As you come in the lines, don't just start chatting about what's going on tomorrow. Add your voice to the song. And after you've received communion, stick around. Don't just head out to the parking lot. It's not that big a crowd. The night is young. Just stay here and let's complete our corporate offering of worship to God together, all right? So Mike, would you come and lead us into a time of communion? There is, there is something special to being here with your church family. And there's something special when we can get together here as a family, as a body of friends, and come to the table. In fact, Jesus did that. It says on the night he betrayed, he was with his closest friends at the table. It said on that night that he was betrayed, he took the bread, which wasn't much unlike this bread. And it said that he broke it and that he said, this bread represents my body, which will be broken for you. And every time you eat this bread, I want you to remember me. And so when I eat the bread, when I come to the table and I eat the bread, I'm reminded our God sent his son to earth, that Jesus left heaven and came to earth to be among us, to walk among us, to show us how to live, that Jesus experienced all the emotions that we've experienced, hurt, pain, joy, and sorrow. And he showed us how to live a perfect life through all of that. Our God walked and talked among us. And it says on that same night, he took a cup and he held it up and he said, this cup represents my blood. My blood which is about to be poured out for you and for the forgiveness of your sins and the sins of this world. And every time you drink this cup, I want you to be reminded of the new covenant that we have, that you are forgiven of your sins. And I want you to remember me. So when I come to the table and drink the cup, I'm reminded, Jesus didn't just walk on earth. He didn't come here just to live. He came here to die and to suffer. The blood was spilled for you and for me, for our sins, for our mistakes. That even if it was just you or just I that had sinned, he still would have sent his son to suffer and die for us. Why? So that we could spend an eternity with him. That is immense love. So when I drink the cup, I'm reminded of the immense love of our God. That he would not only walk on this earth and live, but die for you and I. 
And so in a moment, the band's gonna play a couple songs. And tonight, communion's gonna look a little bit different. In fact, we have stations that are set up up front and then all along the sides and in the back of the room. And it's gonna get a little bit messy in here. We're gonna get up and walk to one of the stations and we're gonna receive communion from one of our college students. And here's the thing, I know some of you are going, that means I gotta get up and walk across people and get there. I know I'm gonna step on someone's feet. It gets messy. I come from a family. I'm the oldest of, of five kids, so there's seven of us in our household. Meal times as a family were messy when a household of seven, and some of you parents understand that, and so it might get a little messy. We might step on some toes, but it's going to be all right because we're here at the table with our family. And so here's what you're going to do. You're going to walk up, and a college student is going to tear off a piece of the bread and say, this bread represents Christ's body that was broken for you. And you're gonna take that bread, and walk over to the cup and dip it in the cup. And the student's gonna let you know this cup represents Christ's blood that was poured out for your sins. And then you're gonna take a moment on your own to reflect, to remind yourself what Jesus did and to take communion. I know some of you are gonna wanna drink from the cup. We're not drinking from the cup, we're just dipping. So some of you are gonna reach and. And if the student pulls back, they're trying to protect you. That's all. They're protecting everyone. But as a church family, there's something special. As a family, when we receive the meal that thousands of years ago Jesus received with his closest friends. So as the band leads us, we're going to stand up. We're going to sing. Some of us are going to go grab communion and over the next couple songs do that. But before that, let me pray. Would you bow your head? Heavenly Father, we are thankful. I am thankful for the, your body, for you coming and living on earth. That you would send your son, that he would humble himself to the point of being in a human body and walking among us. God, that he would live among us and love and show us joy and patience and peace and hurt. God, I, I thank you for the blood that was spilled. And God, it's, it feels selfish sometimes to thank you for the blood that was spilled. But God, I am I'm grateful. We are grateful for the blood that was spilled because it is only through this covenant that we could come to have right relationship with you. So Father, tonight as we come to your table, may we be reminded of the great sacrifice Jesus made for us as individuals but also for the world. Father, thank you for the sacrifice that you were willing to make for us. In Jesus' name, amen. You can take communion at your leisure.
is the anchor for my soul when the waters rise your hand will not let go our hope it is firm because we i mm-hmm. 
to sing the name of Jesus together and to see lives change right in front of our faces. Yeah. Church, we love you so much and we can't think of anything sweeter than to shout the name of Jesus together on a Thursday night. And a couple things, a couple things for you. It's okay to sing like that on the weekend. Okay? All right? So we're counting on you to do that on the weekend. Uh, you know, we've had such a sweet time of sharing time around the Lord's table, hearing God's word so boldly proclaimed. We've sung the name of Jesus. We've, we've, we've been in community with one another. One of the ways we love to give back to God is by giving back to him. You guys know, you're, you're church family. If you want to give financially, those offering boxes are on your way out. Uh, you can find those. Guys, we're going to be doing another one of these in a few more months. We can't wait to see you at that. Yeah. Yeah. We do it so we can lift up one and only name, and that's the name of Jesus. So we'll keep doing that as long as you want to do that. So we're going to sing one more song while you're leaving, or you can stick around and sing it with us because we worship a rescuer who came to our rescue. So let's sing this on the way out. We'll see you on the weekend. Can't wait to see you this weekend, everybody. Love you guys.
church, we love you. We love worshiping with you. What an incredible night. We will see you this weekend and next night of worship. Have a great weekend.